Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, let us all open the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 1 to verse 17. I'm going to share with you the pulpit message of this week very shortly based on my forum if you have your Bible you can open the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 to verse 17 but I will read it for you the Bible says, When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and he touched the man, I am willing. He said, Be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, See that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, My servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, Shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed he, and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take the places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but subject of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother in law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. When Jesus came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him. And he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, this is the paragraph and the verses that we read for the pulpit message this week. And we see now Jesus Christ is coming downside the mountain. After being there with concentration training to his disciples. We have been hearing uh, this training that Jesus uh, taught his disciples. From the book of Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. And last week we remember the message was a house built on the rock. Na wiki iliyopita tunakumbuka ujumbe wa madhabahu ulikuwa unasema nyumba iliyojengwa juu ya mwamba. So let us see what kind of a house is built on a rock. Na wacha sasa tuone nyumba ipi ambayo imejengwa juu ya mwamba. In this world there are so many blessings that people think that they are blessings. Watu hapa ulimwenguni zipo baraka nyingi ambazo watu wanafikiri ni baraka. But are those blessings truly blessings? Yeah, hizo baraka kweli ni baraka? This is a question too I came to ask myself. Hili ni swali ambalo mimi pia nilijiuliza. So from the book of Matthew chapter 5, 
Tutaka kwenye kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya tano chapter 6 and chapter 7 kwenye ya, na sura ya sita na sura ya saba we see the very basic and the very first training that Jesus Christ gave to his disciples tunaona mafunzo ya mwanzo kabisa ambayo ni ya msingi ambayo Yesu aliyatoa kwa wanafunzi wake the first one is about eight blessings na ya kwanza ilikuwa ni kuhusu baraka nane praise Jesus amen bless the who are poor in spirit akafundisha kwamba wamebarikiwa wale walio maskini wa roho for the kingdom of heaven is theirs kwa sababu ufalme wa Mungu ni wao sometimes we think being rich is being blessed wakati mwingine tunafikiria labda pengine kuwa matajiri hiyo ni baraka but this is not how jesus looked up lakini hivi sivyo ambavyo yesu alitazama because he used to speak everything spiritually kwa sababu yeye wakati wote alizungumza kila kitu kiroho and he came to build it the spiritual kingdom na yeye alikuja kujenga ufalme wa kiroho so from all these blessings that we shared na kutoka kwenye hizi baraka zote ambazo tulijifunza we see truly what blessings are tuliona kiukweli baraka halisi ni nini why because jesus is, is speaking opposite to all the blessings that we know kwa sababu yesu alikuwa akizungumza kinyume kabisa na zile baraka ambazo sisi tunazijua kikawaida so it is my prayer that Uh, I see what Jesus was talking about because it is really very hard to understand these eight blessings. Kwa ni maombi yangu kwamba niweze kuona kile kitu ambacho Yesu alikuwa anazungumza kwa sababu ni vigumu kuweza kuelewa kuhusu hizi baraka nane. In chapter 6 we see Jesus Christ teaching them about prayers. Kwenye sura ya sita tunaona Yesu akiwafundisha kuhusu maombi. What are the true prayers? Nini maombi halisi? What are the true prayers that a Christian have to pray? Maombi yapi ni halisi ambayo wa Kristo tunapaswa kuyaomba? What are the true prayers that a remnant must pray? Yapi ni maombi sahihi ambayo remnants lazima wayaombe? Our Father in heaven hallowed be your name. Baba yetu uliye mbinguni jina lako litukuzwe. In most in most cases we forget to know that our God is in heaven. Mara nyingi sana tunajisahau kujua kwamba Mungu wetu yeye yuko mbinguni. Even me sometimes I forget to hallow his name to praise his name when i pray. mwingine mimi mwenyewe najisahau kulitukuza jina lake wakati nikiwa ninaomba. And sometimes we take it very easy ah this is just a word was spoken to those disciples by that time. Wakati mwingine tunachukulia tu kiraisi kwamba ah haya ni maneno ambayo yalizungumzwa kwa wale wanafunzi wakati ule. But actually this is the Lord's prayer. Lakini kiukweli haya ni maombi au ni sala ya Bwana. In Lord's prayer there is everything compressed in it. Katika sala ya Bwana kuna vitu vyote kwa ujumla vipo ndani yake. And finally Jesus Christ is teaching his disciples to bring back all his glory and all his honor to God himself. Na mwishowe Yesu anawafundisha wanafunzi wake kwamba wakimaliza kuomba waseme utukufu wote urudi kwa Mungu. In most cases I pray to gain my own glory. Mara nyingi sana mimi ninaomba nikitaka kupata mwenyewe utukufu wangu mimi binafsi. In most cases when some things happen I need people to uh, to pay attention to me. Mara nyingi sana mambo yakitokea au nikifanya kitu natamani sana watu waweze kuweka umakini wao wote kwangu mimi. But that I realized today that it is Genesis 3, 6 and 11. Nikagundua kwamba hii ni mwanzo sura ya tatu, sura ya sita na sura ya 11. God want all the glory and all the honor be to him and come back to him. Mungu anataka utukufu wote urudi kwake na heshima zirudi kwake yeye Mungu. No matter what happens haijalishi nini kinachotokea no matter how hard i have tried to do something haijalishi namna gani ambavyo nimefanya kitu fulani kwa ugumu sana no matter how smart i am haijalishi kwa namna gani nimetumia akili no matter how much criteria i have haijalishi nimetumia mbinu gani no matter how much uh, education i have bila kujalisha elimu gani nilionayo no matter how much i can do those things in better and best ways than others Haijalishi namna gani ambavyo unaweza kufanya vitu hivi vizuri kuliko watu wengine. All the glory should be to God. Utukufu wote lazima umrudie Mungu. And these prayers are bound to be answered by God. Na maombi kama haya lazima yatajibiwa na Mungu. So this is my prayer so that God can change my my nature and my imprints and my physical roots. Kwa hiyo ni maombi yangu kwamba Mungu aweze kubadilisha hali ya uchapaji wangu na mizizi na tabia yangu. So in chapter 7 Jesus Christ is teaching the disciples about life. Kwa hiyo kwenye sura ya saba, Yesu akawafundisha wanafunzi kuhusu maisha to enter through the narrow gate. Waingie kupitia mlango mwembamba. To watch out the false prophets. Waangalie sana manabii wa uongo. In most cases we want things to go easy. 
Mara nyingi sana tunatamani vitu viende kirahisi. But believing Jesus as the Christ, lakini kuamini katika Yesu kama ni Kristo. No, not believing in just Jesus. Sio kuamini tu katika Yesu. No, believing in Jesus as the Christ. Kuamini huyu Yesu kama Kristo. From that point, kutoka katika hapo ile ile challenge is start to happen before you. Wakati huo sasa ndipo ambapo changamoto zinaanza kutokea ndani yetu. We evangelists we've been sharing the word of God with most technical students for the whole semester. Sisi waanjilisti tumekuwa tukishiriki neno la Mungu na wanafunzi wa Moshe Tekniko kwa muhula mzima huu. And today was the last day that I went there to share them uh, this word of God. Kwa leo ilikuwa ni siku ya mwisho kwa muhula huu mimi kwenda kushiriki nao na nilishiriki nao hili neno la Mungu. And after I completed the sermon and the word I asked them do anyone have a question to ask me? Kwa baada ya kumaliza mahubili yangu niliwauliza kuna mtu yoyote ambaye ana swali la kuniuliza but no one showed up to, uh, to have a question to ask me lakini hakuna aliyejitokeza kuniuliza mimi swali so he said okay i have a question to you kaonikaambia mimi nina swali kwenu because we have been teaching you and sharing you the word of god for whole semester kwa sababu tulikuwa tukishiriki nanyi neno la mungu kwa muhula mzima huu and we have been sharing you the core of the bible and the core of the word of god na tumekuwa tukiwafundisha na kushiriki pamoja nanyi msingi au kiini cha Biblia na kiini cha neno la Mungu. Who do you think Jesus is? I Kwa asked ho, them. Nikawauliza nyinyi mnafikiri Yesu ni nani? One guy said uh, Jesus is the Lord. Mmoja akasema Yesu ni Bwana. And another guy said Jesus is the child of God. Mwingine akasema Yesu ni mwana wa Mungu. All are true answers. Yote ni majibu sahihi. But they're not mostly true and mostly correct answers. Lakini sio majibu ambayo ni sahihi kuliko. Satan tries all the way that we forget who is Jesus. Mara nyingi shetani anajaribu kutumia njia nyingi zozote zile kutufanya sisi tusahau Yesu ni nani. So Jesus I told them Jesus is the Christ. Kwa nikawaambia tena Yesu ni Kristo. And this has to be your homework to the rest of your holiday. Kwa hii lazima iwe ni uh, kazi yenu ya nyumbani kwa likizo nzima mtakapokuwa Why mbibu. because knowing the blessings knowing the prayers but not knowing who is Jesus is nothing. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu kujua tu baraka na kujua maombi lakini pasipo kujua kwamba huyu Yesu ni Kristo, basi yote ni bure. So I came to see clearly how Satan is really fighting this spiritual battle to prevent to hinder people from knowing the identity of Jesus. Kwa hiyo nikawaona na nikagundua namna gani ambavyo shetani anapigana vita ili kuhakikisha kwamba anaziba watu wasielewe kuhusu uh, utambulisho wa Yesu kwamba ni Kristo. So this is my prayer too so that I get imprinted, rooted in nature with this uh, foundations. Kwa hiyo haya ni maombi yangu kwamba nipate uh, uchapaji, mizizi pamoja na tabia za vitu hivi ambavyo nimevizungumza. Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 7 24 and 29. Kwa Yesu anasema kwenye uh, Mathayo sura ya 27 hadi 20 sura ya 7 mstari wa 28 hadi 29. Whoever hears my word and does them yote anaisikia neno langu na kulifanya will be compared to a wise man huyu atakuwa ni mtu anayelinganishwa na mtu mwenye akili who built his house on the rock ambaye alijenga nyumba yake juu ya mwamba so it is my prayer that my house will be in this case kwa hiyo mimi namuomba Mungu kwamba nyumba yangu iwe katika hali hii ya muundo whoever hears my word yote anaisikia neno langu what words neno gani eight blessings kuhusu hizi baraka nane the lord is prayer about true life na kuhusu maombi maisha alisia the man who hears and does it will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock yote aliyesikia maneno haya huyu atakuwa ni kama mtu mwenye akili aliyejenga nyumba yake juu ya mwamba but what is the rock lakini huu mwamba ni nini we know jesus christ was always speaking about him tunafahamu kwamba yesu kristo alikuwa anazungumza kuhusu kitu hiki the rock is a christ himself Mwamba ni Kristo mwenyewe. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ was telling his disciples to uh, to enter through the narrow gate. Yesu aliwaambia wanafunzi wake kuingia kupitia mlango mwembamba. Who is the narrow gate? Nani ambaye ni mlango mwembamba? Jesus Christ himself. Kristo mwenyewe. Praise Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ was telling his disciples to watch out the false prophets. Yesu alikuwa anawaambia wanafunzi wake waangalie sana kuhusu hawa manabii wa uongo. But who is and who was the true prophet? Lakini ni nani ambaye ni nabii wa kweli? Christ himself. Kristo mwenyewe. So God help me to know this spiritual fact. Kwa Mungu anisaidie mimi kuweza kufahamu ukweli huu wa kiroho. So that I won't be shaken when the floods come and the winds come and the rain fall down. Ili nisiweze kuyumbishwa pale ambapo upepo na mvua kali zitakuja. So that I can be a door to opening Africa 
age. Ili niwe mlango sasa wa kufungua msimu wa Afrika. I can be a door to open Africa Gospel Age. Ili niweze kuwa mlango wa kufungua uh, msimu wa injili wa Afrika. I can be a door also to open uh, an Africa missionary age. Na pia niweze kufungua uh, msimu wa umisheni wa Afrika. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Jesus who took our diseases. Yesu aliyebeba magonjwa yetu. Do you believe that Jesus Christ took all your diseases? Je, unaamini kwamba Yesu Kristo alichukua magonjwa yetu? Do you believe that you have a disease? Unaamini kwamba wewe ni mwenye magonjwa? If you believe that oh I have a disease, raise up your hand. Kama unaamini kwamba wewe una magonjwa, nyosha mkono. Oh, are you all okay with no diseases? Nyinyi wote mmepona hamna magonjwa? The Bible and even the scientists not only uh Uh, the scientists the bible tells that everyone is sick ah uh, kwa wana science wanasema watu wote tunasumbuliwa na magonjwa scientifically proved all people are suffering certain disease ki science imehakikishwa kabisa kwamba mtu kila mtu wakati mtu sehemu fulani anasumbuliwa na magonjwa ah uh, if you go to great hospitals there is a, an examination called fbp full blood picture Ukienda kwenye hospitali kuna kipimo kinaitwa FBP full blood picture. If you are taking this uh, full blood picture examination, ukichukuliwa kipimo hiki cha FBP, your whole blood will be scanned. Damu yako yote inaangaliwa. Whether you have a bacteria or virus, kama una bacteria au virusi, this examination will reveal out. Kipimo hiki kitaweza kukujua na kuweza kukutambulisha And kama ni mgonjwa. In most cases, no one comes safe. Na mara nyingi sana kuna mtu ambaye anatoka pale salama. Normally everyone comes with a disease. Kikawaida kila mtu anatoka pale akiwa na ugonjwa. No matter how good you feel. Haijalishi unaonekana vizuri namna no gani. No matter how strong you are. Haijalishi namna gani una nguvu. No matter how much food you eat. Haijalishi kiasi cha chakula unachokula. It doesn't matter you, you must be found with some problems. Lazima tu utaonekana kuna shida fulani. Praise Jesus. But I believe there is a spiritual FBP. Lakini naamini kwamba kuna uh, kipimo hiki cha FBP spiritual cha kiroho FBP mm. kipimo hiki cha kiroho if you examine with a spiritual FBP ukiangaliwa okay, na hiki kipimo cha kiroho this uh, examination will reveal everything about you hivi vipimo vitaonyesha kila kitu kuhusu wewe what is this spiritual FBP hiki kipimo hiki ni nini it is the bible hii ni biblia the bible uh, reveals what are the diseases uh, coming from Biblia inatueleza magonjwa yanatokea wapi Praise Jesus Amen The very first reason that the Bible says it is because of our sins Biblia inatueleza kwamba magonjwa haya yanatokana na dhambi zetu Because we know sin is the source of everything now happening in the world Tunafahamu kwamba dhambi ni chanzo cha mambo yote yanayotokea hapa ulimwenguni Especially bad things Hasa mambo mabaya Especially negative things Hasa vitu ambavyo ni hasi So sin especially the original sin dhambi hasa hii dhambi ya asili even if you say you are healthy hata kama ukisema kwamba wewe una afya even if you say you have fought with your friend hata kama ukisema kwamba hujapigana na rafiki yako even if you say you have never stolen anything from your friend hata ukisema kwamba hujawahi kuiba kitu chochote kutoka kwa rafiki yako you are a sinner wewe ni mwenye dhambi why you are having this original sin kwa kwa nini kwa sababu wewe una dhambi hii ya asili this sin originates from adam and eve na dhambi hii inatokana inatoka kwa Adam na Hawa and you can never escape it. Na huwezi kuikimbia dhambi hii. We have the actual sin. Tuna dhambi hii hii dhambi ya asili. Some diseases are caused by actual sin. Dhambi nyingine zinasababishwa na dhambi ya asili. The actual sin. A dhambi ya matendo. Praise Jesus. Amen. If you have some actual sins, some diseases can come to you. Ukiwa na hii dhambi uh, ya kutenda, magonjwa fulani yanaweza kuja kwako. And some people suffering diseases because of ancestral sin. Wengine wanapata shida ya magonjwa kutokana na dhambi za mababu. So I came to realize I have to examine myself what uh, sin is uh, disturbing me a lot. Nimegundua nime, nime kwamba napaswa nijichunguze aina gani ya dhambi ambayo inanisumbua mimi zaidi. And the really true sin that is really uh, giving out so many diseases in me is the original sin. Na nikagundua kwamba dhambi ambayo inanipatia matatizo mengi sana mimi ni hii dhambi ya asili. Why because from this everything comes out. Kwa sababu kwa nini? Kwa sababu kutokana na dhambi hii vitu vyote vinatokea. But some diseases are caused by Satan himself. Lakini magonjwa mengine yanasababishwa na shetani mwenyewe. The devil. Shetani ibilisi or demons. 
na mapepo. From the passage of today we have seen here that Jesus Christ went to some regions and after he cast out the demons all people were healed. Tumeona kwamba Yesu katika maeneo mengine alipokwenda alipofukuza tu mapepo watu walipona magonjwa. Sometimes you can be examined with FBP. Wakati mwingine unaweza kuchukuliwa kipimo cha FBP and found very clear you are safe. Na ukaonekana kwamba wewe uko sawa kabisa. But you feel very sick. Lakini unaonekana unaumwa sana una Your head is very aching. Lakini kichwa chako pia kinauma sana. Oh your stomach is very aching. Lakini pia tumbo lako linakuuma sana. Do not feel at well at all. Yaani hujisikii kwamba wewe ni mzima hata. The doctors can try to examine you with all kinds of examinations. Ah madaktari wanaweza kujaribu kukuangalia kukuchunguza kwa vipimo vyote. But find no any disease. Lakini wasione ugonjwa wote. Praise Jesus. Amen. But if you are examined with a spiritual FBP, lakini ukiangaliwa na hiki kipimo cha kiroho, you will be discovered with demons. Unaweza kukutwa na mapepo. So those are the reasons why you are suffering. No, kwa hiyo wakati huo hiyo ni sababu sasa kwa nini tunahangaika. So it is my prayer that I will be filled with the kingdom of God and no demons will occupy my heart. Kwa hiyo niombi langu kwamba niweze kujazwa na ufalme wa Mungu na mapepo yasiingie ndani ya moyo wangu. And I will be healed with all diseases even unknown ones. Kwa hiyo nitapona na magonjwa hayo hata yale ambayo hayafahamiki. And I believe it is your prayer too. Na naamini kwamba haya ni maombi yako pia. Praise Jesus. Amen. But there is one uh, disease I mean there is one reason why these diseases are existing. Lakini kuna sababu kwa nini haya magonjwa yapo. This is another reason I like it the most. Lakini hii ni sababu ambayo naipenda sana. God is will. Mapenzi ya Mungu. Sometimes you just feel very sick. Wakati mwingine unajisikia mgonjwa sana. You are trying to solve the problem. Unajitahidi kutatua tatizo hilo. But there is no solution. Lakini hamna suluhu. You are trying to go to doctors. Unajaribu kwenda kwa madaktari. You pray even before God. La, lakini pia unaomba mbele za Mungu. You pray that Jesus the Christ please get out. Na unaomba kwamba Yesu ni Kristo magonjwa toka. But they do not leave you. Lakini magonjwa hayatoki. You keep suffering. Unaendelea kuhangaika. You have to find the reason why. Lazima ufahamu sababu. There must be God's will. Lazima kutokuwa kuna mapenzi ya Mungu. Praise Jesus. Amen. So God has given us all answers. Kwa Mungu ametupa sisi majibu yote. About all diseases. Kuhusu magonjwa yote. But no matter what, lakini haijalishi Jesus who Jesus came as the Christ and he took all our diseases. Yesu alikuja kama Kristo na alichukua magonjwa yetu yote. Praise Jesus. Amen. He promised us alituahidi in in so many places in the Bible. Ah uh, kwenye maeneo mengi sana kwenye Biblia. About healing. Kuhusu uponyaji. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, 5:6. Mstari wa 5 hadi wa 6. Mark 6, kitabu cha Marko sura ya 6, 56. Mstari wa 56. Today's passage Matthew chapter 8 na leo maandiko ya somo Mathayo 8:17. Very 17. Mstari wa 17. The Bible tells us very clear that this at the promise that God will heal our diseases. Yeah, Biblia inatuambia kwamba hizi ni ahadi za Mungu kwamba atatuponya. In Isaiah 53, kwenye kitabu cha Isaya 53 mstari wa mstari wa 5 na 6, the Bible says he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Biblia inasema kwamba alisulubiwa kwa maovu yetu na aliteswa kwa ajili ya magonjwa yetu, kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu. By his wounds we were healed. Kwa kupigwa kwake sisi tukapona. So Jesus Christ has done it everything. Kwa hiyo Yesu alifanya kila kitu. That's why we are confessing it is finished. Ndio maana tunakili kwenye eh, kitabu cha Yohana 19:30 kwamba imekwisha. Praise Jesus. Amen. No question Jesus Christ has done it. Ha, hakuna swali Kristo yeye amemaliza kila kitu. But Jesus in this passage lakini Yesu katika eh, hili andiko la leo after coming down from the mountain side baada ya kushuka sasa kutoka mlimani he is showing his disciples some biblical evidences anatuonyesha ushuhuda wa kibiblia sasa about his healing kuhusu uponyaji we see the leprous man tunamuona huyu mtu ambaye alikuwa na ukoma the leprous man huyu mtu ambaye alikuwa na ukoma comes to jesus anakwenda sasa kwa yesu you know if it is war it were today kama ilikuwa ni leo maybe leprous could be compared to uh, corona labda ugonjwa ukoma ungefananishwa na corona why because people uh, are being uh, separated. are being separated from uh, the society for for corona 
Kwa hiyo kwa sababu kwa nini? Kwa sababu watu hawa wanatengwa na jamii kwa sababu ya corona. Are taken to quarantines. Watu wengine wanakwenda kwenye eneo la la, la kutembea. So that they won't transmit the disease to other people. Ili wasiweze kuambukiza wengine. Mahomu. During this time, Kutuk, uh, wakati huu, during uh, when Israel was under Roman Empire. Wakati kipindi hiki ambacho uh, waisraeli walikuwa chini ya utawala wa Warumi. There were so many leprosy. Kulikuwa guys. kuna ugonjwa huu sana wa wa ukoma. And there was no cure na hakuwa na tiba and these people were separated na hao watu walitengwa they were quarantined hao watu waliwekwa kwenye karantini and they were not allowed to mix with the other people hao kuruhusiwa kuchanganyikana na watu if you are found in the street kama ukionekana mtaani huko ukiwa na koma you must be stoned to death utapigwa mawe mpaka ufe by the law of moses hii ilikuwa ni sheria ya but this man came straight to jesus lakini huyu mtu alikwenda moja kwa moja kwa yesu and said lord akasema bwana if you are willing ukitaka You can clean me. Naomba unitakase. Praise Jesus. Amen. I like the way he confessed. It. Napenda namna ambavyo alikiri. This leprous man knew who is Jesus. Huyu mtu alijua Yesu ni nani? That he is the Lord. Alijua huyu ni Bwana. He has the authority to heal or not to heal. Ana uwezo na mamlaka ya kuponya au kutokuponya. Sometimes when we pray before God, wakati mwingine tunapoomba mbele za Mungu, we are praying for our own willing. Tunaomba kwa mapenzi yetu sisi wenyewe. I wish please give me Ah, ninavyotaka mimi naomba unipe. You know I want that thing. Unajua nataka kitu. You know I want to pass my examination. Unajua nataka kufaulu miti. You know I want to succeed. Unajua nataka kufaulu. You know I want a good house. Unajua nataka nyumba nzuri. You know I want a good wife a good uh, husband. Unajua nataka mke mrembo nataka mume mzuri. But we forget to know that the willing are to him. Lakini tunasahau kwamba uh, mapenzi yote ni, i, yanatoka kwake. So the leprous man said if you are willing you can clean me. Kwa hiyo huyu mtu aliyekuwa na ukoma akasema ukitaka waweza Be- kuniponya. Yeah because Jesus knew that uh, this leprous knew who was him. Kwa sababu Yesu alifahamu kwamba huyu mwenye ukoma alimtambua yeye ni nani. That he is the Lord. Kwamba yeye ni Bwana. And I I guess he knew that Jesus was the Christ. Na nafikiri alijua kwamba Yesu ni Kristo. That's why Jesus Christ, yes, I am willing and I'm going to clean you. Ndio maana Yesu akasema ndio nataka takasika. And he was cleaned. Na akatakasika. Praise Jesus. Amen. So we see uh, the paralyzed servant. Tunamuona huyu mtu aliyekuwa na ugonjwa wa kupooza ambaye alikuwa ni mtumwa. And he was uh, the, the servant of the centurion. Na huyu alikuwa ni mtumwa ambaye alikuwa juu ya bwana alikuwa na bwana wake. Uh, the paralyzed a uh, man was sleeping somewhere very far from the place where Jesus was. Huyu mtu aliyekuwa anaumwa alikuwa amelala sehemu nyingine mbali sana tofauti na ambapo alipokuepo Yesu. But the Akida the centurion man went to Jesus. Kwa hiyo huyu Akida akamwendea Yesu. And he said I have a servant who is really lying down. Akamwambia nina mtumishi wangu ambaye amelala. Please can you say a word so that he can get healed? Je unaweza kusema neno ili huyu apone? Can you heal him? Je, unaweza kumponya? Jesus said, "Oh, shall I come there and heal him?" He asked the centurion man. Yesu akamuuliza, "Je, naweza kuja hapo nikamponya?" Alimuuliza. But the centurion man said, "No, no, no. You do not have to come because Lakini, you, are, you cannot come to my house." Lakini yule akida akamwambia, "Hapana, wewe huwezi kuja kwenye nyumba yangu." It is uh, impossible. Haiwezekani. The situations do not allow you to come to my house. Hali hairuhusu wewe kuja kwenye nyumba yangu. But just say a word. Lakini sema tu neno. And my servant will be healed. Na huyu mtumishi wangu atapona. Praise Jesus. Amen. At that very moment, wakati ule ule, Jesus Christ was so surprised. Yesu alishangazwa sana. And he said, I have never seen such kind of faith in whole Israel. Yesu akasema sijawahi kuona imani ya namna hii Israel. Just saying a word. Akasema niseme tu neno. And he will be healed. Na kwamba atapona. Wow. Let him be healed then. Akamwambia okay basi apone. So from that very moment Jesus Christ uh, said a word that man was healed. Kwa wakati ule ule Yesu alipotamka neno yule mtu alipona. A word. Neno. Faith. Imani. So I pray before God. Kwa ona muomba Mungu. So that I can have this faith. Niwe na imani hii. That Jesus Christ can do something for someone I pray for. Kwamba Mungu uh, kwamba uh, Yesu anaweza kufanya kitu Uh, kwa mtu ambaye ninamuombea. We have so many friends who do not come to church. Tuna marafiki wengi ambao hawaji kanisani. We have so many friends who are not Christians maybe. Tuna marafiki wengi ambao sio wa Kristo. Do not know who is Jesus. Hawajui Yesu ni nani. And some even have never heard about Jesus in their life. Wengine pia hawajai kusikia labda kuhusu Yesu. So I got this prayer to that I have to pray really for people now. Kwa hiyo nikapata ili ombi kwamba kweli lazima niombe juu ya hawa watu. Why? Because 
This is an evidence from the Bible. Kwa nini kwa sababu hii ni ushuhuda kabisa wa kibiblia. That we can pray for our friends. Kwamba tunaweza kuombea marafiki zetu. We can pray for our families. Tunaweza kuombea familia zetu. And more enough we can pray for the unbelievers. Na zaidi sana tunaweza kuombea hata wasioamini so that they hear the gospel one day. Ili ya kwamba wasikie injili siku moja. There are so many ways to evangelize them. Mungu ana njia nyingi sana za kuweza kufikisha injili kwao. Praise Jesus. Amen. And he will do it. Na Mungu atafanya. And we see a favor a woman here. Na tunaona mtu ambaye alikuwa na homa. He is Peter's mother-in-law. Huyo alikuwa ni mama mkwe wa Peter. Jesus comes there and touches her and she got healed. Tunaona Yesu anakwenda pale anamponya, anamgusa na anapona ugonjwa wake. And another evidence we see demons cast out. Tunaona pia uh, ushuhuda mwingine wa kibiblia kwamba mapepo yalikuwa yanakemewa from last verses in chapter 8 tunaona katika uh, mistari ya mwisho ya huu mstari uh, ya hii sura ya nane. That people were very sick. People, watu walikuwa ni wagonjwa sana. But they had no uh, clue why are they sick. Lakini hawakujua kwamba kwa nini walikuwa ni wagonjwa. But right away after the demons were cast out from them. Lakini muda ule ule ambapo mapepo haya yalikemewa all their diseases were healed. Magonjwa yao yote yalipona. Praise Jesus. Amen. So we are coming to conclusion. Kwa hiyo kwenye hitimisho why are we uh, to enjoy these diseases? Kwa nini sisi tufurahie magonjwa? Sometimes we feel uh, very disappointed when we are suffering from some kinds of diseases. Wakati mwingine tunajisikia vibaya sana tunapokuwa tunapatwa na magonjwa haya. Why diseases are spoken here? Kwa nini magonjwa haya hapo yamezungumziwa hapa? The diseases here are spoken even long time ago even before Christ was born. Tunaona kwamba magonjwa yalizungumzwa zamani kabisa hata kabla Yesu hajazaliwa. In the book of Isaiah 53:5. Katika kitabu cha Isaya 53 mstari wa 5 hadi wa 6. Praise Jesus. Amen. As we have seen the true blessings here. Kama tulivyoona baraka halisi hapa. Jesus Christ is speaking negative to what people know. Yesu hapa alikuwa anazungumza kinyume cha vile ambavyo watu walikuwa wakifikiria au kujua. So I believe this again is another blessing. Tunaamini pia kwamba haya magonjwa wakati mwingine ni baraka. Blessed are those blessed are diseased people. Wamebarikiwa wanaoumwa. Praise Jesus. Amen. Why? Kwa nini? Because when you are sick, kwa sababu wakati unapokuwa unaumwa, you will increase your concentration. Utaongeza umakini wako. But do not increase your concentration somewhere else. Lakini sio kuongeza umakini kwenye kitu kingine chochote. Increase your concentration before God. Ni kuongeza umakini wako mbele za Mungu. Why because once you are sick, kwa nini? Kwa sababu ukiwa mgonjwa, you cannot walk. Huwezi kutembea. You cannot write. Huwezi kuandika. You cannot do anything. You, you just lying on the bed. Huwezi kufanya kitu kingine chochote utakuwa tu umelala. It is a good time for concentration. Huu ni wakati mzuri wa wewe kupata umakini. Enjoy the word of God. Na kufurahia neno la Mungu. Concentration before God. Na kupata umakini mbele so, za Mungu. To this view or this perspective. Kwa hiyo kutokana na mtazamo huu, I can pray, oh God, please can you make me sick? Naweza kuomba Mungu wakati mwingine kwa Mungu kwamba ah Mungu hivi unaweza kunipa ugonjwa? Please make me sick a bit. Nifanye hiyo mgonjwa. So that I enjoy some concentration. Ili <laughs> niweze kufurahia umakini. Praise Jesus. Amen. And Why are we uh, speaking about these diseases? Kwa nini tunazungumzia kuhusu haya magonjwa so that we can experience the power of God. Ili tuweze kuona kupata uzoefu wa nguvu za Mungu na uweza wa Mungu. Praise Jesus. Amen. Why because we have these all evidences here. Tunaona kabisa kwa nini? Kwa sababu tunaona uh, hizi shuhuda zote hapa tuliposoma leo. We have so many witnesses here. Tunaona hawa mash, mash, mashahidi wengi hapa. So I wish to be one of these witnesses. Kwa hiyo natamani pia mimi niwe mmoja wa hawa mashahidi to experience the power of God. Ili niweze kuona na kupata uzoefu wa hizi nguvu za Mungu. What kind of power? Aina gani ya nguvu? Healing. Uponyaji. Praise Jesus. Amen. And this is the chance na pia hii ni nafasi to be filled with the Holy Spirit ya mimi kujazwa na roho mtakatifu holy spirit kujazwa roho mtakatifu why i'll be laying down and doing nothing kwa nini kwa sababu wakati ule nakuwa tu nimelala sifanyi chochote i'll be focusing on my life now nitakuwa tu nafikiria kuhusu maisha yangu sasa that's why we're saying there is god's will ndio maana tunasema kuna mapenzi ya mungu and that's why i'm saying after i heard this message if, uh, from the missionary kwa ndio maana nasema tangu mimi niliposikia hii message kutoka kwa missionary I like the oh there is God is willing nilipenda sana hii sehemu ya kwamba kumbe kuna mapenzi ya Mungu kwenye ugonjwa wangu Praise Jesus Amen Let us pray for this message Kwa tuombe kwa ajili ya message hii I know everyone heard Najua kila mtu amesikia And I believe the Holy Spirit is working for everyone 
na naamini kwamba Roho Mtakatifu anafanya kazi kwa kila mmoja. And I pray that you concentrate again and again. Na omba ili kwamba uweze kutafakari zaidi na zaidi na kupata umakini zaidi na zaidi. Every day. Kila siku. And the Holy Spirit will guide you to the message that you have to receive every day. Na Roho Mtakatifu atakuongoza kwenye message ambayo wewe unapaswa kupokea. Let us pray. Tuombe. Dear Heavenly Father. Mungu Baba, we glorify your name. Tunalitukuza jina lako. Thank you for this message. Tunakushukuru kwa uh, ujumbe huu that Jesus Christ came and he took all our diseases. Kwamba Yesu Kristo alikuja na akabeba magonjwa yetu. Help us to have the faith. Tusaidie tuwe na imani. Like that of a leprous man. Kama ya yule ya mwenye ukoma. Like that of a centurion man. Kama ya yule ya kida. Like that of Peter. Kama ile ya Petro. So that we can enjoy uh, the blessings of diseases healing ili tuweze kupata na kufurahia baraka za tunapokuwa na magonjo. I pray for the church. Naliombea kanisa and I pray for the remnant. Naombea pia remnant. Get them by the Holy Spirit. Waongoze kwa Roho Mtakatifu so that they keep enjoying this pulpit message. Ili waweze kuendelea kufurahia ujumbe huu wa madhabahu. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Ninaomba katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen.